Hey everybody, uh, it's been a while, um, but welcome to my review of Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen Volume 1. I am going to be covering all of Frank Miller's run on Daredevil. This includes um, Daredevil Born Again um, and Daredevil The Man Without Fear, um, as well as the three um, trade paperback editions of um these, these books, Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen, Volumes 1 through 3. Um, and I think I'm also going to cover Electra Assassin um, by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz, um, since that kind of ties into the whole Daredevil mythos, um, with Electra being Frank Miller's um, own character that he kind of invented and brought to fruition in his run on Daredevil. Um, as showcased in this particular volume. Um, so this is basically, um, it's the first volume um, in Frank Miller's legendary run on Daredevil um, through the 70s. Um, and this was at a point when Marvel Comics, um, you know, Daredevil was kind of like a lesser known, like dying kind of character. You know, um, the creators weren't really sure where they were going to take the character of Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil. And then Frank Miller comes onto the scene, and this is one of the first things he did, really, was Daredevil. Um, so Frank Miller comes onto the scene and just totally changes the game. Um, the first, like, two-thirds of this book um, are just Frank Miller as the artist, and other people, um, mostly Roger McKenzie as the writer. Um, and I'll, I'll get into my, my feelings on that, um, in a little bit, but he only starts out as, um, like the penciler, um, at first. And then, uh, Klaus Janssen does a lot of the inks. And, you know, if you're familiar with Frank Miller's work, you know, he works pretty heavily with Klaus Janssen. He worked with him um, on, uh, Batman, the Dark Knight Returns, among many of his other, uh, most famous works. Um, so this was kind of like the beginning of their partnership in comics. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool to see like kind of the early days of, um, Frank Miller's career along with the partnership between he and Klaus Janssen um, as uh, comic creators. So this first, the first two issues of this book are not even from Daredevil. They're from uh, Spider-Man comics, and they're written by Bill Mantlo, which I gotta say, the writing in these two issues is very, very, like, clunky and not interesting to me. Um, I did not care for the writing in these two issues. Um, it felt very unnatural and very exaggerated. I mean, true to form in, um, you got to remember like what time period, um, these comics were coming out in. Um, you know, this was during, um, the seventies when almost all comics were pretty much very, uh, melodramatic, very, um, much playing into, um, like cheesy dialogue and things of that nature, like ludicrous plots, uh, kind of reminiscent of like the stuff you'd find on the 1960s Adam West Batman TV show. You know, you got these crazy death traps and like contraptions that, you know, some random villain is going to use it to destroy the world. And then the, the heroes have to come and save the day. Um, that kind of thing. And it, I mean, you got to understand for what it is, it's not bad, but compared to, um, a lot of the comics that I'm more used to reading, this didn't really, uh, get the job done for me. And then you get into, um, you hop right from like a cliffhanger in one of the Spider-Man issues 
And then you hop right into just regular Daredevil comics. And this is um, Roger McKenzie doing the writing for almost all of these stories um, until it gets to Frank Miller, of course. Um, but Miller is still doing the art, um, like the pencils, and um, the inks are done by Klaus Janssen. Um, this story, this particular issue, and a lot of the issues in this book early on revolve around Black Widow and um, the relationship between Black Widow and Matt Murdock, who is Daredevil's alter ego. Um, this story, he takes down um, a character known as Deathstalker, and you get to see kind of like the origin of Deathstalker and how he was once somebody else. Honestly, kind of a forgettable story. And then you bring Bullseye into the mix. Now, Bullseye is not like a brand new character for Daredevil. It Like, he wasn't at this point, at least. Um, he was already a pre-existing character. But it was cool um, seeing him come into, you know, um, fighting Daredevil and being drawn by Frank Miller. Because Miller's art has always been very cool to me it's always been very stylized and like just you know the way he draws um muscles and hands in particular um the way he draws hands is like he makes him super like bulky and like um this is especially true in his work um on sin city um you know, you can you can tell whenever you look at like a hand in a comics, like you can tell that, oh yeah, that's a Frank Miller hand. Um he also draws faces in a very distinctive manner. Um one thing I always look for is the eyes. He draws very distinctive eyes um in comics. And, you know, his his style evolves um throughout his career, but in this particular volume, um, you kind of get the very like beginnings of his style. There's an issue where in this comic, I mean, in this volume, where uh, Daredevil takes on the Hulk. And it's kind of a cool little, like, um, I don't want to say a throwaway story, because it does it does tie into other things. But, you know, Hulk makes, like, a cameo appearance, and, like, it's, it's fun. Um, ooh, excuse me. And then you get um, the origin story of Daredevil, how he was um, blinded by the uh, isotope um, from the back of the truck after saving an old man um, from being hit by a truck. Then you get the death of his father and how he chose to avenge his dad um, and become Daredevil and fight crime. Uh, there is a story in here involving um, Dr. Octopus, the famed uh, Spider-Man villain. And it's not great. It's not, I mean, the one, my main complaint with this particular volume is the writing up until Frank Miller takes over, the writing is just very lackluster. I thought, um, it's not, it's not great. It's not horrible, but it's, it's very mediocre. Um, you know, like I said before, it doesn't feel natural, um, and it's very over-exaggerated, and I mean, it has its moments, but for the most part, it's just kind of uh, lackluster. And then you get this issue, which this is kind of the start of like the change in quality. This issue is done by, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, but David Michelini, and um, he does the writing, and Miller, of course, is still on the art duties, but... It's Daredevil facing off against uh, a character known as the Mauler, who has a uh, a personal vendetta against um, a former boss of his. And this was a really cool little story. I thought this was really well executed. And then you get to the cream of the crop. Um, Frank Miller taking over on writing duties as well as keeping his position um, as penciler. Um, this is the introduction of Elektra, who has become, um, one of Marvel's more beloved characters. Um, and like, 
just from the very first like sentence alone from the first panel alone you can tell the difference in quality like the writing he's so descriptive and he really like gets really deep into um describing through words um the city um hell's kitchen new york and just like getting into like you know the smell of the rain and like um the the light of like the street lights on the street and how it reflects off of the rain and then like the smell of trash in the streets and like just really great like um attention to detail when it comes to like sensory kind of writing like he gets the senses like going like you can it's like you can feel like what he's describing um you get a flashback here to um, the introduction of Electra, how Matt Murdock met Electra and she was his first love. Um, and, you know, the tragic uh, sort of origin of Electra, you know, the death of her father. Um, and just really great stuff. And then you bring Bullseye back into the mix. Miller brings Bullseye back into the mix. And the things he does with Bullseye, um, in this this particular volume are very interesting um he makes him really smart but um also like kind of unhinged you never know what bullseye is going to do i think one of my favorite parts about um miller's take on daredevil in this volume is how he chooses to deal with the kingpin um wilson fisk he makes kingpin into just this hulking like oversized monstrosity of a man um but he's still just that he's still just a man who has very real issues very real problems he's got his motives and he really loves his wife vanessa and so whenever vanessa is kidnapped you know wilson fisk kind of has to um figure out exactly how he's going to retrieve Vanessa um, from wherever she's being held and there's a lot of treachery going on within Kingpin's organization um, within his like branch of the mob um, and it's handled so well and like I love 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 this panel here um, Kingpin just looks so huge here and it's like you can tell that's Frank Miller just doing his thing he always goes for really like uh oversized like hulking characters like i think of his rendition of batman from the dark knight returns just crazy muscular um or marv from sin city just oversized like a hulking beast and so um he does kind of the same thing with kingpin here and it works so well um you know kingpin's like super super strong and um, just the way he's handled is really cool. Um, and then it kind of ends on a cliffhanger here. You know, I don't want to get too deep into like, oh, excuse me, into like what exactly happens, but um, it ends on kind of a cliffhanger. I'm excited to see where the next volume uh, takes us in the story of uh, Daredevil and the current predicament with... Um, Wilson Fisk and Vanessa, his wife, what, what she's up to. Um, you get a little bit of supplemental materials in the back here. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Um, Frank Miller, early Frank Miller, like pre 2000s, Frank Miller has always been one of my favorite creators in comics. Um, and this, this volume really solidifies his talent, especially when you compare, um, the writing um, from the earlier issues in this book, uh, Roger McKenzie's writing compared with Frank Miller's writing, there's such a clear difference in quality, and it's really easy to um, to pick up on. At least it was for me. Anyway, that about does it for um, my review of Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen, Volume 1. Um, look forward to my review of Volume 2 coming up in the near future, and uh, thanks as always for watching. Have a great day.